Hey guys, this is uh, Danny Bossa from the TRT and Hormone Optimization YouTube channel. Hope you're all doing well. Um, it's going to be a fairly short video. Um, we get a lot of people posting in the Facebook group um, from all over the world uh, discussing the situations that they're in. Uh, I get tons of emails from literally all over the world, uh, Facebook messages, Instagram messages, you name it. Uh, people finding my phone number and calling me, uh, sobbing on the phone. Um, and some of the stories getting posted on the Facebook group are just, I mean, they're dis they're disturbing. They, they're, they really are disturbing. There's one guy that posted, um, on, I think it was on Saturday, two days ago, stating that he had been on TRT for the last six months and he has to have knee surgery. Figuring, okay, so what's the big deal about that? Well, his physician told him because he's on testosterone replacement therapy, he needs to stop therapy immediately and needs to wait for all traces of the testosterone hormone to be eliminated from his body prior to to being approved for his knee surgery. When asked why, he said, because testosterone causes blood clots. Um, so he now has the choice to either get surgery on his knee that he absolutely needs, um, but if he does, he's got to chemically castrate himself. Or he can continue his treatment so that he remains a man, for Christ's sakes, uh, but goes through the rest of his life with a knee that actually requires surgery. So I was trying to think of what I would do in his position, and I don't know what the hell I would do in his position, because either of those options suck. So he posted about this, and there were two physicians in the Facebook group that said, you know, this guy was my patient. I would also tell him to stop therapy. Because if he did get a blood clot, the testosterone would be blamed. And we both, we all damn well know that's got nothing to do with it. But the testosterone would be blamed because the medical boards don't know any better. And we would get sued. So to protect ourselves from not getting sued, we would tell the patient to get off therapy. But you might say, Danny, why are you getting so worked up? very first thing that a physician promises to do, there's something called the Hippocratic Oath, is the promise to do no harm. That is the very first rule of thumb of a physician, to do no harm. The physicians are essentially saying, we're prepared to do harm to a patient in an effort to not get sued by the medical boards. They will knowingly chemically castrate this individual knowing damn well the harm it will cause so that they can do the surgery and not get sued. For those of you wondering about testosterone replacement therapy and why this is relevant or irrelevant or whatnot, um, and haven't watched any of the videos, when a man with normal testicular function, or uh, any, any man with normal testicular function will have naturally produced testosterone. If his tes testicles stop producing testosterone, he can take exogenous testosterone, exogenous meaning from outside sor source, and replace the testosterone his body was normally making. The testosterone molecule is identical. The molecule of testosterone that you inject in your body or take in a cream or any other form of route of application is the exact same molecule that's made in the body. So if I take some testosterone and inject it into my body, my body recognizes this molecule and cannot differentiate between the one that I would normally make and the one coming from an outside source. The molecule is identical. Many of you will be saying, well, how can the molecule possibly be identical? You know, it's made in a lab, it's synthetic, it's not natural, blah, 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 blah. Okay. If you take two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen, what happens? You wind up with water. Is it synthetic water? No, it's not synthetic water, it's water. What is water? Two part hydrogen to one part oxygen, H2O. Whether it's made in a lab or made in nature, it's still water. That is the molecular structure of water. You can make it in a lab, you still wind up with water, the same water you find in nature.
You can make testosterone in a lab as long as you have the precise, exact molecular structure and it's still the same molecule that is what the body makes. body doesn't differentiate. The mechanism of action of the testosterone in your body is identical to the mechanism of action that you take from the outside because the molecule is the same. But for some reason, some physicians and medical boards are under the delusion that testosterone from exogenous source has a completely different mechanism of action than that made naturally. So what this means is, say this guy with the knee surgery goes into the doctor and says, hey, I, I brought a couple of people with me. Got this uh, athlete over here, you know, he's a fighter in the UFC. His testosterone levels are off the chart, totally natural. The guy is a you know, phenom, he's a genetically gifted individual. He also needs knee surgery. Do we have to chemically ca castrate him? Doctors are saying, no, all good. And what about my teenage son over here? He's uh, 16 years old, um, total jock, high testosterone levels. We've not him tested just for fun. Uh, he also needs knee surgery. Do we have to chemically castrate him? Doctors are going to say no. Do we have to temporarily remove their testicles to ensure that all traces of testosterone have left their body? Doctors say absolutely not. That'd be silly. It would be silly. I got this lady over here. She's on uh, hormone replacement therapy. She's taking estradiol, progesterone, some thyroid, a little bit of testosterone as well. She also needs knee surgery. Do we have to chemically castrate her? Nope. And this 18-year-old uh, girl here, totally natural, is like, no, it's all good. Okay, so just the guy that's taking testosterone from an outside source, suddenly that testosterone is completely different than the testosterone of all these guys that are natural. And it's dangerous, it's going to cause a blood clot. It's like, yeah, that's right. <sighs> Guys, we're in 2021. We have robots on Mars that we're controlling remotely. We have reusable rockets flying into space to deliver cargo and coming back and landing safely. We've got cryptocurrency. We've got the internet. We've got self-driving cars. We've got stuff that just a few years ago we wouldn't even imagine. We have it. You know why? Because it's 2021. But somehow, the notion of testosterone is still something that the medical boards and most physicians can't even grasp. And they're prepared to cause harm. I cannot respect a physician that took an oath to protect his patient and will cause harm to his patient by chemically castrating him for the point of a surgery to ensure he doesn't get sued. I'm sorry, it's ridiculous, it's moronic, and these people should be ashamed of themselves. What I would have loved is a doctor to speak up and said, hey, if that was my patient, I'd have to tell the patient, Here are, here's the situation. I can't get you to stop your treatment, because if I do, I'm causing harm. The problem is if something happens with your surgery, I'm going to get sued, I'm screwed. So that's not an option. Now I can do the surgery, but then you'd have to stop the treatment because you need the surgery. But now I'm causing harm, which is just, what am I supposed to do here? Either I'm causing you harm or I'm going to get sued. So you're going to have to find a physician that's prepared to do this. You're going to have to find a physician that can stand up for what's right Go to the medical boards and say, here's my situation. I've got a patient here on testosterone replacement therapy for the last six months. Clearly at this point, his natural production is absolutely non-existent. And the medical boards are instructing me to chemically castrate him so I can perform an operation on his knee. And I can't do that in good faith because I'm a physician. The patient needs this treatment and the patient requires his surgery. So what do we do here? And if the medical boards put up a fuss... You have to say, you are going to have to provide me with some kind of evidence that what you're saying is true, because it's not. Are leg surgeries and knee surgeries prone to blood clots? Absolutely. Will testosterone cause that? No. There is no evidence of this whatsoever. Now, if there was, every single human being would be chemically castrated prior to a knee surgery, Right. Teenagers, natural guys, gifted athletes, old people, young people, babies, doesn't matter. 
Because if the testosterone causes blood clots, we're going to have to chemically castrate them. Why aren't they chemically castrating every single freaking person on the planet if they need a knee surgery? They don't. Why? Because it'd be retarded. It'd be ridiculous. It would be moronic, and it would be insane. Why do they do it for guys on testosterone replacement therapy? Why is that suddenly different? Why is that suddenly an exception? It's maddening. Why aren't there people out there in power to stand up for this and say, this is stupid, we need to address this, and we need to get this resolved because we cannot harm our patients. So I get in these situations, and me being the problem solver that I am, because that's what I do all day long, I solve problems with my business. I'm a problem solver. I get people coming with me with problems that I am powerless to assist them with. Why? Because I'm not a physician. I'm not even allowed talking, apparently, about a lot of these things, because I'm not a physician. So if I read up on SHBG, and I give a lecture on SHBG, which I can just point and say, well, here are all my references, and this is how it works, and I can bring on any other doctors who tell you the exact same thing, and this is what it is. No, you're not allowed. You're not allowed because you're not a physician. Apparently, a physician calls me up to ask me a question because they don't know because this isn't anything taught, they're taught in school. The physician could get in major hot water for asking me, a non-physician, a question. But the physician doesn't know quite where to go to get the answer, because they don't learn it in school, and when speaking to their colleagues, they can't get the answer either, so they look to other avenues. I have physicians contacting me in secret, <laughs> trying to get feedback, where I have to keep their names absolutely tightly <laughs> under, under wraps, because they could get sued for speaking about medicine with a non-physician. So the guy would have to stop his treatment to have his knee surgery. They're eliminating vitamin D, anything over 1,000 IU in Canada. You can't buy vitamin D over 1,000 IU in Canada because it causes adverse reactions. I haven't seen a single study of vitamin D causing adverse reactions pretty much at any amount. But apparently you can't do that anymore. It's illegal. And in Canada, if you buy it from the United States and port it, it's going to get seized at the border as a controlled substance, almost as if you're purchasing steroids. Basically the same thing. Now they're going to start banning uh, NAC and acetylcysteine. Half the guys I know take it. Powerful antioxidant. Stuff is fantastic. Um, that's going to get banned too. The vitamin D part was the really funny one. The adverse reactions. I can go buy 10 cartons of cigarettes at the store. Tell the clerk, I'm going to smoke every single one of these tonight. Clerk's going to say, yeah, sure, no problem. So you're not going to call the cops? You're not going to call the medical boards? You're not going to call anyone to come to my house and stop me? No, totally illegal. You can smoke all the cigarettes you want, drink all the alcohol you want, eat all the shitty food you want, drink all the sugary drinks you want. But vitamin D, oh no. No. Can't do the vitamin D. No. Adverse reactions. Vitamins. Yeah. But all this other stuff, yeah, it's not a problem. Testosterone replacement therapy, knee surgery? No. you got to stop that. you got to chemically castrate yourself. The world has gone to hell. The world has absolutely gone to hell. It's getting worse, and it's getting worse, and it's getting worse. If you are a physician out there with a shred of self-respect and a shred of knowledge of what's right and what's wrong, please do not put your patients in a position to cause harm Tell the patient flat out, if I do this, I'm causing you harm. I don't want to be responsible. I'm going to have to find someone that will. I'm going to have to find someone with the balls to do what's right and stand up for what's right. Patients, if you need any type of surgery, treatment, I don't care what it is, and you're on testosterone replacement therapy and your physician tells you you need to chemically castrate yourself, Please use a shred of critical thinking and get another opinion. Speak to other physicians. You don't have to listen to me. I can't give you advice because I'm not a doctor and I'm not even allowed. What I'm asking is to contact other physicians, get other opinions, and find a physician that will tell you, hey, 
I've had people with knee surgery, and I know how this works, and I've already addressed this to the boards, and they've given me authorization based on this and this and this, and I did fight, and I did stand up for what's right because I can't cause harm to my patients. I can do your knee surgery. Great. If you want to take the risk and go, because you're convinced that testosterone doesn't cause blood clots any more so than a natural guy, then go. Obviously, if you believe that testosterone causes blood clots and you're ready to chemically castrate yourself, I mean, by all means, do that. But please do not just blindly accept the very first suggestion from your very first physician and just say, if that's what my doctor says, well, that's what I got to do because he's a doctor. What do I know? Please go get another opinion. Call 50 doctors until you are confident that the decision you're making makes sense to you and that you are aware of the risks either way. You've made a calculated judgment call based on the information you got from said physicians and 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 you do it you know on your terms and not being forced to do something like chemically castrating yourself so here i am a non-physician i'd love to find a way to help this guy out uh, but i don't have the power to do so i'm useless to do this i i have no power to do this so Guys, please be careful out there. Um, protect yourselves because they're not out there to protect you. They just aren't. They're there for, for their own asses. There are a handful of physicians that I know that really genuinely are will will go to the ends of the earth for their patients. They'll they'll walk through fire and step on hot coals for their patients. But this is a tiny fraction of the population. Please be careful. Please think about every action you do when it comes to medicine or your health. Please try to get as many opinions as possible and protect yourselves. That's it. Consider becoming a channel member for exclusive features like loyalty badges, early access to new videos, funny stuff like rough cuts and bloopers, members only photos and status updates on the community tab and members only live stream chat. On desktop, use the join button next to the subscribe on mobile, use the join link in the description.